Alright, in this tutorial we're finally getting down to uh, this spry validation of the text field. I know in the past few examples uh, we have been working with the text field, but there are a lot of options that we did not uh, go over in the past two tutorials on form validation. So I'm just going to throw in a text field real quick. i call it example. Then I'm going to wrap a, a spry validation text field around that. I'm going to go ahead and save this. Make sure that everything is working right. There we go. I'm going to get out of this. Okay. So down here in our properties, we have a lot of things to choose from. We have a lot of different um, options, starting with type and format, and pattern. And min and max value and required and uh, validate on blur and on change and so we're going to start we're going to start by looking at what types of text we can validate um, and this is the spry text field validation uh, uh, contains the largest amount of options because there are so many different things that can be entered in a text field and as you can probably guess um, an integer is basically a a number that does not have decimal decimal points um, so you can type any number without decimal points inside of an integer field but if you do type something with a decimal point it's going to return as an invalid format um, the next which we have already covered is email address and uh, I don't think I really need to go over that one because we have definitely checked that one out twice um, so let's move on to date okay now after we click date you notice that this format option was highlighted down here um, and when you click on that you can see that there are some options here and you see these MM's, DD's and YY's and if, if you don't already know this the the MM stands for month the DD stands for day and the YY stands for year with two letters the one below it um, MM and DD still stand for month and day and um, they do not have to actually be like zero nine or zero one you could actually just put in one for the the date as far as the month goes and you could also put in one for the day instead of zero one so if you put in zero one uh, it'll still be valid but if you put in one for mm and dd it'll also still be valid and the uh, the four wise means that it requires you to put in the full year so and this is the same thing it's just reverse uh, you can see the different formats here and you can see here we've changed from uh, forward slash to uh, a hyphen and so on and so on and here we change to a period so that is the date format and um, all those are, are good options to use. Um, I usually just use the default option. The next thing that we have is um, the time. And with time, um, it's pretty much the same thing as before. Uh, we see HH uh, stands for hour and mm stands for minutes um, hh indicates the hour specified using the 24 hour time like 13 for 1 p.m. for example hh is like the little h little h is the hour and little m little m is minutes and little s little s is seconds uh, little t little t is before noon and afternoon notation that is a.m. or p.m. so t indicates time of day using a single letter a or p okay and the next one will be uh, credit card and basically that's self-explanatory uh, 
it validates that it is uh, it doesn't actually validate that the card is valid but it validates that the card is in the correct format the next one we have is zip code and you have some options here you have the US five digit zip code and then you have the US nine digit zip code with the five digit zip code in the front and then hyphen with the four and you also have the the English uh, the UK pattern and the Canada and then you can also create a custom pattern which I will go through in the next tutorial uh, the next one we have is a phone number um, you use uh, the format menu to choose US or Canada phone number format uh, or select custom patterns which you uh, you then define in a pattern field so I will describe what custom patterns are uh, just like I said in the next tutorial um, the next one we have is social security number and that is pretty much self-explanatory uh, this option requires three numbers a hyphen uh, two numbers, a hyphen, and three more numbers. So basically just like your uh, standard social security number. Um, with, with, social security, with social security numbers though you might want to avoid requesting those uh, for reasons of privacy and fear of identity theft. Uh, many people they don't want to give out their social security number and by law they don't they don't have to share those. So just just a little side note alright uh, the next one is currency um, here you can see that you can format it like that or like that you probably wish you want to continue to select that uh, one thing to note here is that uh, a dollar sign is invalid or a, a euro sign is invalid inside of the text field so if somebody is going to put, you know, dollar sign 1000, that's going to be invalid. But if they just put 1000, then that's going to be invalid or that's going to be valid. Uh the next one is real number or a scientific notation. Basically, this is uh a number that allows decimal points and scientific notation. So uh, if you if you have a number where you want to use decimal points uh, instead of using an integer, then this is the number you would use. Uh, the next one is IP address. You see it's uh, IPv4 only or IPv6 only and then uh, the newly uh, not yet fully implemented IPv and IPv4 format. Um, and lastly before I end this tutorial is a URL. Um, make sure and note that in this validation here with the URL it has to have a HTTP colon forward slash forward slash for it to be valid so uh, hopefully those work out um, if they don't then there's something that's called a, a custom pattern or a custom uh, validation field and if so if you're not happy with any of these then you can just make your own and uh, if you if you continue watching I'll let you know how to do that um, one other thing though that I want to say about this is these right here on blur and on change on blur means when you click outside of the text field and on change means every time a letter changes so if you click on change then it's going to validate every time you talk I mean not talk but every time you type so if you're typing a letter then it's going to validate as soon as you type a letter but if you use blur and uh, uncheck change then you can type in and keep typing in and once you're done and click outside of the text box then it's going to validate so that is it for this tutorial in the next tutorial we are going to be going over custom validation of a text field and we're also going to look at a few other things uh, that have to do with the spry validation of a text field. So thank you for watching. Uh, don't forget to subscribe and I will see you next time.